combats barrenness in your life. Your praise combats barrenness in your life. When David came back with the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible says he danced to the Lord until his clothes kept to come off of him and he danced and continued to dance. And his wife decided that he didn't look good dancing like that. And the Bible tells us because she criticized the praise of God, she was barren in her womb the rest of her life. The way that I combat barrenness in my life is to participate in the praise of God. Everybody clap your hands.
opportunity now to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Let's recite it together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come forth his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Verses 4 and 5 again, please. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Would you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. visit with our interim pastor, Elder Lockett, uh, really to do some technical work for him. Uh, but I, as Elder Chair reports, uh, he is doing much better. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched him get up from his chair without grimacing in his face and, and take steps without Tolerant about pain. And that is a step forward. We, he is biting at the bit, wanting to get back. Uh, but I encouraged him that there are two things that you can do to ensure that you end up in the same position three to five years from now. One of them is to disobey the instruction of your doctor. And the second thing is to try to get back to get back to work before you are completely healed. So we encouraged him to get better, all Amen. the way better, Amen. and then come back to us. Uh, he, he does welcome your visits and your phone calls. He wanted me to uh, communicate with him. Go by and be a blessing to him. Amen. It lets him know that you care. All right. We honor the presence of the Lord in this place. The Lord is here. And whatever we need, God will provide. I know He will. I want to say happy birthday to my wonderful first lady, Sister May Alexander. Amen. And it is also worth mentioning that my godmother, Sister Brooks, is so is uh, celebrating her 82nd birthday.
Bible says, and they heard these things. He added and spake a parable because he was nigh unto Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that they might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Thank you. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Verse 18. The second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And likewise, he said unto him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, Behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere, an austere man, Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest where thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that did I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money to the bank, that at my coming, I might have required mine own with usury or interest. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to the one who has ten. And he said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For, they say, for I say unto you, and unto one which have shall be given. Him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken from him. I'll stop there. Our Father, speak to us as only you can. We need to hear from you. We don't, hear, we don't need to hear another good sermon. We need to hear from heaven. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to talk about kingdom business. Kingdom business. The Lord is offering here, of course, a parable of sorts. Because the people that he was talking to, and since he was on his way to Jerusalem, thought that he might be said, or that he would set up a thousand year kingdom right then and there. They thought that he would go to Jerusalem, call together an army for himself, and overthrow Rome. But history tells us that there was really no need for that because Rome was imploding under its own weight to begin with. Rome did not last another 100, 150 years after this day. Rome made a critical but fatal decision. They decided that they would invest emergency powers in one man and call him the Caesar. As soon as that decision was made, Rome was on its way down. So they decided 
they thought, perhaps, that what he meant was he was about to go set up the kingdom right then and there. But the kingdom that is to be set up where Jesus is going to sit on the throne of David and reign for a thousand years has yet to come because we have to be saved first. Some time has to be offered for people who know not the law to be saved. Because the promise of the Lord through Abraham was that through thy seed all the families of the earth would be blessed. Jesus could not necessarily reign then and there because all the families of the earth had not been blessed. All the families of the earth had not had an opportunity to know this Jesus in the pardoning of their sins. And so Jesus has to now go and invest in his apostles uh, the ministry that we are now enjoying. The Bible declares that after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This is the pound. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall receive power. And you shall be witnesses unto me. First in Judea. And uh, in Jerusalem. And then in Judea. And then to the uttermost parts of the world. I don't want Jesus. I want Jesus to come back today. That's true. But Lord let some folks get saved first. Yes. Don't just save Jerusalem. Don't just save Israel. Save us all. Hallelujah. If the Lord had set up his kingdom right then and there, it is possible that Cornelius and his house may not have been offered the plan of salvation. They may not have received the gift of the Holy Ghost even as the apostles received it. So he has to now go into this far country and invest it. What he has, his spirit and his power in his apostles. They go out. This is a lot of history in a few minutes. But they go out to different countries around the world and spread the gospel. There is always risk when you are doing the Lord's business. And I've got to hurry to a close because we're just we're almost out of time. There's always risk in doing the Lord's business. Would you get me uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18? Thank you. You are going to be rejected sometimes. You are going to be persecuted sometimes. But that's all a part of the business. God blesses busyness. Okay. Let me come at it this direction. I have looked for quite a few jobs in my life. And I almost never get the job I apply for. It always comes from some out-of-the-blue area. I wasn't on this website looking for this job. It just so happens that in my busyness, somebody found out. In my busyness, this, this, this resume that I sent off and forgot that I sent it off. They want me. God blesses busyness. If you want to find out, it is, is it any wonder to you, is it any wonder to you that the people who are most successful in this world are also the ones who have no time at all? They have schedules that are, that are jam-packed. You, you have to wait and, and get appointments with them because God has blessed their busyness. There is always risk involved when you're doing something for the Lord. There's always the risk of, reje of rejection. There's always the risk of persecution. 
but listen to what the Lord tells the, uh, the, the, uh, the servant who was afraid. He says, I'm going to tell you something about, I'm going to show you something about myself that you already know. You already know that I take up where I don't lay down. You already know that I pluck up where I don't plant. I harvest where I don't even plant. So here is why the man with one pound was able to get to gain ten. Because he already knew that about his master. He knew that if I just put it out there, the master was going to get an increase out of it. It is not even up to you. If they reject it, they reject it. If they persecute it, they persecute it. But it will increase. Because God increases where he doesn't even plant. My, my, my. One man plants another waters, but it is God that giveth the increase. I'm not even looking out for the one-to-one -one transaction. I am looking to plant somewhere and water somewhere else. But what I'm looking for also is for God to give the increase. It might happen a week from now. It may happen a month from now. I may not live long enough to see the seeds that I've planted uh, come to fruition. I may not live long enough to see my children uh, come back to the Lord fully and enjoy ministry like I do. But I do know this. We have planted and we have watered. So, he comes now to, interestingly enough, for the people that he gave, the one that gave him back ten, and the one he gave, the one that gave him back five, he never did tell them, if you bring back ten, I'll give you rulership over ten cities. Because I brought back thirty. He never told them, if you bring back five, I'll give you rulership over five cities. Which means that there was a there was an emotional reason why they uh, went out and were productive. They realized how much they had been loved by their master, and they worked for him because of the affinity they had in their hearts for him. This is how much I love you. I love you so much that I lay it on the line time after time after time after time. you gave me and what, what I got from it many times over. I'm not even looking for reward. Do I know reward is there? Yes, because I know what kind of God God is. But I'm not doing it for reward. I'm doing it because he loved me so much. And he gave himself for me. I submit to you and we're going to read the scripture. I submit to you that if you are afraid of putting it out there for him, it is because you have not realized how much you have been loved. First John chapter 4, verse 18, please. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not make perfect in love. There is no fear in love. That is what we call an absolute assertion by reason of deductive logic. There is no fear in love. That has to be received by faith. You have to tell yourself that when you are afraid. Amen. You have to tell yourself when you, when you are afraid to risk your own heart investing in someone else. You have to be able to tell yourself, the Bible says, there is no fear in love. But perfect or matured love casts out fear. When I realize how much I've been loved by God, it casts fear from my body. It casts fear from my soul. I'm not afraid to risk what God has given to me because He loved me so much. I can't help but put it out 
there for him. I can't help but lay it on the line for him. I wonder how many of you will lay it on the line for the Lord. Time after time. The servant, some of some commentators say that the servant was lazy or he was, you know, whatever he, whatever they say he was. But he was just afraid. He took, he took the gift that God had given him. He took the power of the Holy Ghost. And he carefully put it in a napkin. And he folded it and he kept it. Right there. I'm not going to let anything happen to what God has done. I don't want to lose what the Lord has given to me. I remember, don't you remember when everything was wrong? <laughs> okay, well maybe I'm talking too new to some saints. Some of, the old, some, some of you uh, senior saints remember when everything we wanted to do was wrong in some way, shape, or form. Everything was a sin. And so we walked around with the Holy Ghost in a napkin. We just, we just put it right there. So, so, so we wouldn't lose what the Lord had given to us because, you know, you know today if I do something that's wrong, I'm on, on my way to hell and, uh, I, and, and I'm just leaving right there. So when Jesus comes, there ain't nothing wrong between me and the Lord. But you've got to risk it. Well, I don't want to hang out with people that are not saved because, you know, something might happen to me. Something might happen to them. That's right. The power of the Spirit of the Lord yes. is stronger than the power of sin. Yes. People have to be exposed yes. to true Christianity. Yes. People have to be exposed yes. to the power of Over and above their 
objections. Here they are, sitting in the, sitting in the, in the sanctuary. Some people, you have to witness to them for 30 years before they come. But they come. You have to be able, you have to risk it. The servant went to him and said, I'm afraid that's the problem. The problem is, I haven't realized how much you have loved me. Now let, 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 me, let me try to do this in three minutes. You have enough power in you to cast fear out of other people. When you realize how much you have been loved, and you love other people, and they are in relationship with you, you can love them until they are no longer afraid. And 
The other person has got to give what they have. Trade on what God has given to you. Don't be afraid to trade on it. Because quite honestly, if you are afraid to trade on it, your love for Him needs to grow up. Mature love. Perfect love. Cast out fear. Now I'm going to go down from here. I'm going to get in my car. And I'm going to realize in my own life where I'm afraid to risk it for Him. And then I'm going to ask the Lord help me grow up in my faith. Help me grow up in my love for you. Show me more how much you have loved me. Because this is not about, this is not transactional. This is not about me doing something in order to, to do right for God. This is me realizing that God has been so good to me that he is worth the risk. I may be afraid, but he's worth it. He's worth the risk. Our Father, we thank you for what you yes. said to us. And I pray, Lord, that each of us goes down from this place realizing how good you've been to us. Realizing just how much you've loved even me that you would die for us that you would sacrifice your own life so that we might live and God help us to put that love on the line so that others might see the blessing that we found in you this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What a blessing. In Jesus I find. There is peace and joy all around. Precious secrets he'll unfold.
title of the Holy Ghost did not die nor shed blood for sin. It was Jesus who was the Christ of God who died, shed blood for our sins, and therefore we baptize in the name of Jesus. And then God promised He would fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You hear yourself speaking in a language you did not learn, and we did not teach you. That is something that is particularly between you and God, and it has to be that way. If you have yet to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, please come here right now. Let these altar workers pray with you that God will fill your soul to the overflow with His Spirit so that you can begin trading on what God has given to you. And then, you know, my, my guess is, my guess is we probably should should pray together because I, I don't I, I think I was fishing with a dragnet today meaning that everybody got caught here some kind of way we all got caught here I got caught you got caught everybody got caught here so rather than rather than come individually would you, would you just come and let's gather around this altar because we really do need to we really do need to realize just how loved we are and we need to trade on that love and give it away for the building of the kingdom. And this is not me being outlandish or anything like that. But I believe the Spirit of the Lord. And I, I believe we all got caught somewhere in this text. I don't believe one of us can walk away from here without having felt the conviction of the Holy Ghost coming from this text. Our Father, you have loved us so much. You have loved us beyond our comprehension. Part of the fellowship of the mystery is that we might be able to measure the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of your love for us. God, our love needs to grow up. Our revelation of love, of your love for us, and our love for others needs to grow up. It needs to be perfected. Help us, Lord, to take that which was given to us and trade on it and not be afraid to put it out there. Not be afraid to tell other people that we've been loved of our God so much and that they need to be loved by Him in the way that we've been loved by Him. Oh, God, help us, God, help us in undeniable ways to realize your love for us. Fill us to the overflow. Fill us until we can't stop talking about it. Fill us until we dream about it. Fill us until it's the topic of our dinner conversation. Jesus, we love you. We worship you and we thank you. We repent before you. Oh God, we apologize for being afraid. We didn't know how to combat the fear. But God, you told us today that if we would just get an, get an idea of how much you loved us, it would cast the fear from us. Oh God. Do it for us, Lord. Do it for all of us. In Jesus' name, till we walk with you in sincerity, 
so that we can walk with you peacefully, so that we can walk with you without fear, without guilt, without the challenge of sin. Jesus, deliver your people. And before I send them back to their seats, Lord, I'm asking that you pour out your blessings upon your people. In the name of Jesus, you see what these families are going through. You see what these individuals are going through. Nobody, nobody under the sound of my voice is getting away from your sight. You hear the cries of their hearts. Now, Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon your people. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, work it out for them, Lord. Work it out for them. Fix it, Jesus, please. I beg you, Lord, touch your people. I beg you, Lord, heal your people. I beg you, Lord, sanctify us all through the power of the Holy Ghost. Even the Lord. Oh God, we thank you for what you've done and we trust you for what you're going to do. But for what, most of all, God, we want to give you praise for what you're doing right now.